What is architecture? Um, so I think, um, to me, architecture is that part of the built environment that um, is part of our culture and that has the ability to influence our lives and the development of society. Um, so I wouldn't say architecture is the entirety of the built environment, but, but only that part that really is um, part of culture and having an influence. And I think that's also the aspiration we need to have as architects to make architecture. And um, I think it also works retro, uh, not retrospectively, um, reciprocally. Um, because if we look back in some past time, let's say, then architecture is an expression of that time. And it, it is an image of how people lived, thought, belief systems, a kind of narrative, or it tells a story of a particular time. Um, so one could also say it's a collection of experiences, um, aesthetic compositions, socio-political events that manifest um, symbolically in the built space. And so only thinking forward then, um, it's our goal to find codes to project into the future. So in a way, we're responsible for continuing that kind of reciprocal relationship. So what can architecture do? Well, in a way, it's now implied in the answer of the first question. If, if I say that to me, architecture can have an influence or should have an influence um, on the development of society or our lives, then I'm also saying that it can do that, right? It can stimulate change, um, progression, um, and when you think of, um, so another thought to that is when you, when you think that spatial orientation is really um, the origin of our thinking, and we know that from development of children. So a, a sense of ourselves is directly dependent on a sense of orientation of space. And the kind of, when you look in history again, our, our perception or our thinking about space changes over time. Space as a container, space as a narrative space, or space as, um, maybe now in the last decades, more broken space, bent space, hybrid space. That, developed, that thinking changes, and so it changes the relationship we have to the world and how we think of ourselves. And so in that sense, um, space is architecture, so that's what I think architecture can do. Um, maybe another thought is, um, architecture and space can induce transformation. And I mean that both literal with built space, but also figuratively um, any new idea that needs to, that we want to enter into our reality, sort of the, the unknown coming into the known needs mental space. Otherwise we keep doing what we've been doing. And that mental space it's the same with built space. Um, we need a change inwardly and outwardly, and it can induce transformation. Otherwise, we keep, you know, it's spinning in the same. Um, so yeah, space that space for change in a kind of game of the word, and. Um, and then I would also say that uh, architecture um, creates identity. It, it's related to all of these points. Mm. And that on a personal level as well as for 
the public, for institutions, for businesses. Um, it, I think it has that capacity. Um, what is your architectural position? So my position currently, I think we're at a um, very interesting time. Um, people say it's a time of insecurity, or people say it's a time of where everything is possible in architecture. Um, and I think it's, it's a time of change again. And it seems we're all looking for another dimension of how to look at architecture and the world, I would say, and how to navigate. And in that kind of attempt to navigate all these possibilities, there is old systems of order, new systems of order, and it's, it has a, um, that has a potential to really find an attitude with which you navigate that. So it's not so much what can we do, but why do we do it? And with what aim? Um, and there has been such a trend towards, of course, there is all these technological advances and progress, and one could go down that route and just continue progress. Um, more automation, more distant to sort of the person. Um, but on the other hand, there is this growing awareness of um, social responsibility, um, social intelligence, that machines still cannot really take over. And so I'm feeling there is these two worlds, and to me, my position would be I don't think there is a, a solution in one or the other area of thought, but rather in a kind of synthetic thought, to bring these together. And it's a more broad or all-encompassing approach. Um, and I think we're, there is another point to make, which is a paradigm shift. I think there is a bigger change happening right now, not just a small step. And for a long time, also in, in, in science, and I always like to look at neuroscience, um, we've analyzed. We can analyze and go to detail and more and more the smaller particle and try to understand what's going on, but it doesn't ultimately give the answer. And so now there is a shift from analysis to synthesis or we know that more knowledge doesn't get us anywhere, so there is a shift from knowledge to also experience, um, or ecology and networks, or um, an introspection next to progress. So it's both. It's not going back to something or, or, or saying something is um, only negative, but it's that, um, that look towards synthesis. What is your design method? Um, the, the method really, again, comes from that position. Um, it's an open method, so it doesn't follow a prescribed chain of command, let's say. Um, it's an idea-driven process where we try to deliberately switch media, I would say, or switch worlds, switch point of view, so we can bring, and I'm not saying it's between one or the other opposing polar you know, way of thinking, but it's this multiple points of views and finding that third space in between. So it's not just this and that or that, but both. And I think there is this kind of potential that opens a third space that we otherwise don't know. And you can only do it if you allow to work um, in that way. And so concretely, it's 
For example, working in the analog and the digital, deliberately involving the body as well as the mind, allowing for intuitive steps and then alternating them with analytical steps. And if you stay in one media, you only have one side of the brain, but it's kind of flipping between the two and allowing um, for interpretation and um, very personal, unthought things to happen. Also the error. Um, and um, so the feedbacks between these different uh, ways of working are kind of the goal and that navigate that process. Um, also, when you think of digital design, there's been for a long time people have thought about bottom-up processes. And so I'm neither advocating one or the other, but a combination of the two. Um, you have to have an idea. I don't believe in just bottom-up thought. I think you have to have an idea of where, you're a vision where you're trying to go. And then you can, again, flip, looking at it from the part to the whole or from the whole to the part. But not, um, it's not a one-way street. Um, but again, I think the potential in that is in that third space that, that lies sort of in the middle. <laughs>